Welcome back to The Gun Show, my friends. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have tuned in for the first time ever and you showed up for muscles or weapons, I don't have either of those. This is about the last name gun, and this is about manufacturing all the things that are made around us in an invisible industry, but we're going to make it visible, and I have some great guests with me today. But before we get to that, I just want to mention this is an MTD CNC production. I have to thank our sponsors, which well, one of them may or may not be here today. I guess I gave something away just then, didn't I? Anyway, let's thank our sponsors, AMT, IMTS, EBITDA Gross System, Shop Floor Coffee, and the American Precision Museum. We have a few games today, actually, as well, so stick around to the end. We're going to do Two Truths and a Lie, which one of my guests is fantastic at, if you've seen some of my other podcasts. Would You Rather, Rapid Fire, and If I Were, I'm going to pick about three of those, so a lot of fun games at the end. Without any further ado, let's put your hands together, please, and thank you. We can hear you through the interweb. We can hear you, I promise. If you clap good enough, we will be able to hear you. So please welcome my dear friends, Bonnie and MC, and we got Dr. <laughs> Love here today as well. We can hear the clapping. All right, for those of you who join into this show a lot, we do typically uh, a bad joke of the day. And as much as Christian loves my terrible, terrible jokes, we're going to replace that for the second half of the season of the VIP edition with a gratitude and a pet peeve. So we're going to go around this table and just show one piece of gratitude and one pet peeve. So I'll go first. I've already said mine before we hit record, so they already know what I'm going to say. But my gratitude is that these folks are here, that they've come all the way to Florida to spend time to share their story, to talk IMTS today, to get everyone excited about 2024 and what's going to be on the showroom floor as well as all the other things around it. My pet peeve, because I fly so often, and if your folks out there are listening that don't fly so often, when that bell goes off, when the plane lands, don't run to the front of the plane. You have to wait in line. Please and thank you. I'm so, I, I'm going to start tripping people, and that's rude. I don't want to start tripping people, but I will. All right, that's my gratitude and pet peeve. Uh, Bonnie, can we slide over to you, and then we'll go to Mr. Dr. Lonnie Love. I love I'm going to do that all day today. And MC, we'll finish up with you as well. Do you have a gratitude and a pet peeve? the gun show my friends this is the vip edition um a gratitude well i i love that you have an imts gratitude and you appreciate us being here because that's awesome but i also i mean i appreciate you having us on like we're so excited to come back and bring our special guest lonnie love i mean i lonnie's awesome i'm so excited that he said yes to come here with us so i'm really grateful that you're here with us today. thank you so. it's good to be here I'm glad you're here. Um, and then pet peeve. I don't know. So I just dropped my daughter off at college, and my husband, my daughter said, Mom, she said it to her, my dad, and to her dad, is Mom going to be okay? She's my youngest. And I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. So I left my house today. I fell off, I fell down, hit the garage, off the garage step, hit the oh, refrigerator. No. Oh, no. I thought I was going to drive to the, the airport, then realized I need to take an Uber because I'm coming back to a different airport. So I was like, maybe I'm not okay. And you trip twice in the airport. It's not, oh it's not a pet peeve, but it's like a just take your time, slow down. Life is going to come at you as it comes. But it's a good that's, reminder. That's like my, like, just take care of yourself. And it, how, ex it, it explains a lot. <laughs> and how is your head right now? I'm good. My yeah? hip and my ankle are a little, you know, because I, I fell down two steps. My back hat saved me. My computer still works. Oh, goodness it gracious. Is a day. It is a day. But I got here. I'm so, I'm so happy you're here. Lonnie, do you got a couple for us? Yeah, yeah. So this is going to sound corny, but my gratitude is my wife. She yes, actually, good one. She actually let me kind of pick up at the last part of my career and move to a different part of the country and start over for fun. So she's, she's I'm really grateful for her. A pet peeve is crap on the highway. I had all of us travel, and I was going to Chicago earlier what was it last week and blew out a tire, but, mm. but that led to a gratitude in that blew out a tire, had 30 minutes to get to the airport and a DOT guy pulled over and changed my tire for me. So, nice. So it's a gratitude, peeve, gratitude. That all works. Woven together. It'd be awesome if all of our pet peeves could turn into gratitude, yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. lessons and make us, make us better. Yeah, it was like a Zen moment cause I was starting to get pissed. <laughs> I was like, shit, you know, and some guy pulls up and takes helps take care of me. So, and shout out to awesome. the wife. Well done there. Amen. Amen. Yeah, cool. <laughs> very well done. MC, what do we have from you? Let's see. For gratitude, I'm gonna, I'm kind of gonna um, piggyback, dovetail off of what you said. I would say all of you and everyone in manufacturing. I mean, I've said this before, but uh, I've only been in manufacturing technology for three years, and from day one, it's been the people are amazing and have mm -hmm. just. Um, 
welcomed me and accepted me in. And Lonnie Love is one of, <laughs> Bonnie, of course. And then Lonnie Love, I remember our, we have a, a talk, a, a video podcast with uh, Lonnie we Love. We usually talk Tom about Curtis. aliens, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that today if you want to segue. I kind of have a thing for aliens. <laughs> and I had a, we had our first call, and I you know, kind of took this over. It came from Bonnie created it for Spark in 2020. And then when I came on board in 2021. And I got on a call with Dr. Lonnie Love and Dr. Tom Kerfus. I, I mean, I didn't know what to say at all. I think I just would laugh to try and like keep uh -huh. the conversation going. Yeah. And they accepted me immediately. So gratitude yeah. for all of you and then everyone in the That was industry. a good laugh. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Easy, you're easy appreciate, to accept. I appreciate that. She is. I'll do it a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my pet peeve, and Bonnie knows this a lot. Lonnie a little bit. Uh, well, you. Uh, are, uh, my pet peeve are people that are late. It just drives me crazy. And you were early today. I'm kidding, because I'm late all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm turning that into a positive, because there are a lot of articles that say that people who are late are actually more optimistic than others. It was written oh, by someone on. who turned the article in late. That's what, I, that's what <laughs> President Ed Ski Snowboard said. I don't believe it. It's written by the same people that say people who cuss are very smart. Oh, man, I must be like Einstein. Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, Reuters has a piece, uh, Nation, all Can of you them. send that to my wife? I will. I, I she won't believe it anyway. Uh, she won't believe it. She goes, this is bullshit. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> Call it fake news. All right, we're going to get into some questions. We're going to get into IMTS. We're, we're here to talk about that. We're stoked about it. We're just a couple of weeks away, which when this publishes, will probably just be a couple of days away, which will be perfect timing. But before we get into the IMTS part, are there any toasts that you guys would like to give as we're all sipping our beverage of choice? We have bourbon for Lonnie. We have a tequila for MC and Bonnie, and I'm drinking a scotch. So anyone with a cheers that they would like to give for either the moment, the day, the occasion, the life, whatever you want. I'm going to give a cheer to Peter Eelman. It's hey! yes. going to be his last IMTS as the head of the show. Oh, my goodness. And Because he's retiring. And I, I, MC and I were talking about it today where – I think he's excited to tell people that this is this. I, I'm finally, you know, letting 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 it go. And wow. So wow. I, I cheer to to Peter, a successful IMTS. He brought it back after COVID, and he's led the team to an amazing, another amazing IMTS that's going to happen in just a few weeks. Bonnie, it's almost like you've done this podcasting thing before. <laughs> <That is good laughs> You're yeah, coming with the it. answers this time. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> Lonnie, do you have one, buddy? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. To these two. Uh, I love they're it. They're I love absolutely it. a joy to work with and have been so much fun. So really appreciate both of them. So cheers. And see, they've, they've created, <laughs> uh, can you live up to those two? Don't cry. No. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Oh, wait, I got to, you know, sip after the cheers. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and talk while you do that. Yep. Um, I mean, I, 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 cheers to, well, I'll, cheers to Peter Eelman for giving me a chance. I mean, but that's about me more. Uh, but cheers, <laughs> cheers. cheers to you, MC. Cheers, cheers to manufacturing technology at yeah. IMTS. Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, cheers to that. Okay. Mm. Got to make noise. Uh, you know, I heard a rumor. That's why, uh, and, and definitely somebody will correct me. I think I've even brought this up before on the show. Uh, but when I was in Japan, the uh, culinary respectful thing to do when you have udon noodles, when you have your soup is, <laughs> right? And that's, what, that's showing the chef that you like their food. And I was told that it was because before TV was available and all you had was radio, that how do you show that something is delicious? And it just became a cultural thing. Now, I was told that in Japan. I hope they weren't trying to trick me. It kind of made <laughs> sense. I've repeated it quite a few times now. So I hope, I hope it's okay. Uh, but let's talk IMTS. The most important thing here today, we're doing it on purpose. Lonnie, I'm actually going to start with you because I've had MC and Bonnie. This is <laughs> third time's a charm with them, and I love having them here. But they were so stoked today. We have a surprise guest. You're going to love him so much. He's been with IMTS for so long. I got to learn a little bit, again, before we pressed record, about some of what you've participated in and created. I would love to hear some of those stories of the past, as well as what we're excited about for the one coming up. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I mean, I, I got to know these guys, especially Bonnie, back in 2014, actually in 2013. So I was at Oak Ridge um, working in the manufacturing demonstration facility, and we were developing this whole new process, large-scale composite printing. At that point in time, Biggest things you could print. About what year was this, Lonnie? This was 2013. Okay. And we started We started in 2013, and the biggest thing you could print was about the size of a coffee cup, maybe a little bit bigger. And we had this audacious idea, well, let's just change it. Let's just go for the gusto, and let's make things, like, as big as a car. 
and you know, real fast from cup to car, cup to car, okay, C to C, right? <laughs> I mean, you're going a completely different different game, and uh, and you know, we struggled at first and started getting some good parts, and and we're making things. We were really targeting tooling, and then in January 2014, everything changed. We had uh, two two companies come visit. The first was Rick Neff from Cincinnati Incorporated. He saw what we were doing, and he's like, "Hey, we ought to. We should commercialize this. We could make a make a product out of this." It was like, "Great!" And then the second was Jay Rogers from Local Motors, and he came in to look at tooling, and we're talking about it. He's a real real sharp guy, and we're talking, and he's listening, and he's asking questions, and as he's leaving, he turns, he goes, "Hey, you think you could print a car?" Oh, yeah, sure. Why not? You know. <laughs> Didn't even think anything about it. Two weeks later, you know, I get a call. A real size car, real size right? car, real size Drivable. car, drivable, right? Full you th scale. You think you could do that? Sure, why not? What the hell? <laughs> and uh, next thing I know, he calls up two weeks later and he goes, "Hey, uh, I signed us up to print a car live at IMTS." I was like, "When?" He goes, "In September." I was like, "What year?" He goes, "This year." <laughs> And this is January, You're like nine months. It's like a baby. We're gonna birth a baby here, you know. It's like holy cow, but and it was awesome. It was, so you have nine months to do what's never been done done before. Never been done before. Perfect. And and we had it was just a lab scale system, and but it was partnerships. The partnerships were absolutely awesome. Uh, Rick and Cincinnati. They we we went up to Cincinnati. A colleague of mine, Craig Blue, uh, he and I went up to Cincinnati to see their capabilities. And Rick turns on this laser cutting machine and it is zipping. It's like twenty feet. It it could cut metal twenty feet long, eight feet wide. It moves it. You know just incredible speeds and he turns it on it's zipping around i turn to my buddy craig i was like i want it i got it we can actually make this into a big ass printer right and so sign a, a agreement with them we go out to local motors and go meet jay and he's got like this off he's got this rally fighter this really cool car we're in the back of his of his plant just driving this car around jumping and you know jumping ramps and just crazy stuff and it was like, these guys know what they're doing. We could actually pull this off. But I will say, the very first good print we did was on the showroom floor. No. It was, was it really? Down. We were making changes on the machine the day before. You were down to the wire. Down to the wire. But that... With no proof that it was actually do none, doable. None. None. No, we were like, it was like, I'm going to either get, I'm either going to get a raise or get fired. One or the other is going to happen. It's going to be a good day or a bad day. And, and it was on Bonnie. Oh, she yeah. brought it in. Yeah, brought she brought in. it in. I was the lead I had, on it from, the, from AMT side. And I had, yeah. I had one of my senior engineers going, Lonnie, look me in the eye. You know we're not going to print a car. You know we're not going <laughs> to print a car. It's like, it's okay. If we don't print a car, we'll print chairs. We'll figure it out, but we're going to try. And that really kind of was a signature for me. That was like, this is how we have to be doing things. We have to take great risk. I watch Elon Musk and, and SpaceX. It's like, we all need to be doing that kind of stuff. You know, take some huge risks. We're going to fail. We failed a lot along the way, but it, oh, yeah. it birthed the whole industry. It, it created a whole new industry. So it was a, that was a blast. IMTS in 2014 was just absolutely a rush. I remember afterwards, somebody came up to me. They go, well, how's it feel? And I was like, yeah, this is for a guy. I was like, oh, gosh, I feel like I just had a baby, but I'm ready to get pregnant again. You know? <laughs> it was so much fun. And that's what, to me, I fell in love with IMTS. It's just this audacious, crazy environment. Companies talking to each other. Everybody looking at how can we push manufacturing forward. So it was a, it was a real rush. Yeah, I've got to come back to you because I have a ton more questions, and sure. you're the the star guest today with no. these ladies being on here before. But I, I don't want to no. uh, for us two to hog all the time, so I'm going to bounce around a little yeah, bit as well. We'll come it. back, Bonnie. What are you most excited about for the one coming up? I mean, we're we're just when this release is just a couple of days away. Yeah. And if you're if somebody's listening right now and, and they go, well, I'm on the fence about visiting. Well, what would push them over the fence to go and say yes? Oh, I mean, I think and it's like every IMTS. It's like the, well, we just had the Olympics, which is always a great example. It's the Olympics of manufacturing. Like it's, I mean, we have the Emerging Technology Center again, which is where we did the 3D printed car and which we've always done something really unique and different. And this year it's the same thing. It's unique. It's different. Um, Oak Ridge is coming with this whole new hybrid cell with a machining center and nine other partners. Again, it's this huge project never before and seen working in a research lab, working with industry, and we're releasing it at IMTS. So coming to see that. And then 
like like that's just amazing. Plus, there's other thing in the ETC, but it's it's also like um, an MC can talk to it later. We have uh, four stages with like top leading thought thought leadership manufacturing leaders speaking. We've got Microsoft involved with IMTS on a major scale for the first time. AWS, um, Google Cloud, like like that's where manufacturing is changing. And to come and see how is it changing with the automation and and we have a they all want to talk and tell their stories. We've got thought leadership. We have technical on the smaller stages. So, um, you know, the exhibitors are going to, they always bring their best. And that's always what is I'm, the most important thing about IMTS, the exhibitors and walking around and talking to people, which is what Lonnie was talking about with, you know, partnerships and stuff like that. That's where it's all created ideas. But there's also all these, like, just other things that are just floating around if you just walk around. And I, I just... It's just all so exciting. I agree. If 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 I am a first time or even second or third time visitor of IMTS, you just mentioned a whole bunch of areas that I might miss if I'm not fully paying attention because maybe I'm going to invest in a machine or some products or some automation or whatever technology is going to prove my shop, but I might accidentally miss one of the speakers that I need to pay attention to. What's the best way for me to truly plan my trip and schedule out my day, especially if I'm there for a day or two versus the full six days? Yeah, so we talk about the My Show Planner a lot. You just have to log in. You can plan your visits with your exhibitors. You can actually like email them back and forth through the through the portal, which is helpful. But it also has all the conferences, all the stages, and the stages. All that content is free. And then your conferences, you have to pay. But it's like it gives you if you're interested in a certain type of technology, or if you're looking to do something. You can easily find it by searching by the type of technology you're trying to find. So you really can schedule yeah. out your day and say, "I need to. I'm going to go to these booths. I'm going to yep. listen to these speakers." And we're st we're at four halls, and I mean, I, I think I looked it up the other day. Over 1,200 exhibitors, 1,500 exhibitors. Yeah, I mean, it's a big number. Plus. Yeah, yeah. 1,600 plus. Ex so someone should, and and it used to be two weeks, right? And I, I heard a story that said it was two weeks when the interweb wasn't as popular as it was, <laughs> and people would come in with their blueprints and literally sit down and figure out how to make a process work yeah you know well, they, now they do it they just have it on the like the, the I, iPad. ipad they yeah. just have it on the ipad some people still have the the you know the piece of paper the blueprints but i mean but that's the thing where they they come and they come with i gotta solve a problem mm -hmm. i'm trying to find something and and make it work and that's what imts is all about it's real manufacturing trying to solve problems and then move things forward like yeah. i was talking about i did research uh, for my next opportunity uh, because I wanted to write a book. And uh, I came across this statistic that 70% of small business owners want to fund their retirement through the sale of their business, when in fact only 20% of them actually had a saleable business. And it just, it broke my heart uh, anticipating the fact that baby boomers, there was a light at the end of the tunnel, and in fact it was a train. And so I really wanted to do something about that. So I wrote a book called Scaling the Exit. That's good. The purpose of the book was to articulate a strategy for small to medium sized business owners to increase the value of their business to the extent that they could actually sell it and fund their retirement. And that was really the first iteration of what became EBITDA Growth Systems and our brand promise, which is to double the valuation of small, medium-sized businesses, specifically in terms of an, uh, an exit, but double their valuation um, or we give them their money back. Well, being here in South Florida, whenever you say solve a problem, instantly vanilla ice pops in my head. If there's a problem, <laughs> yo, I'll solve it. Anyway, MC, you're somewhat, to say new is unfair because it's been a few years now, but I would say at this table, been to I love it. the That's least amount of, so what I want to do, I want to grasp the audience out there that maybe hasn't been yet or has only been once, what do you get most excited about at IMTS? When it's coming, when it's there, when, it, when the, even when the week is over and you feel this vibration of happiness of all the, the technology that existed during that week and conversations, what do you get most excited about and invite others to come join you in that excitement? Let's see. Uh, I'll say three things. And just that's a, a nod to a, a Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett, pull my ear for Peter Yeoman, because uh, he likes threes. So three things. So one, um, people. You think people like people? 
<laughs> I like people. And it's, uh, I mean, as, as Lonnie and, and Bonnie were talking about the partnerships um, that come out of manufacturing technology that come out of a AMT and IMTS. And, you know, again, because I've been here three years, I like to set the bar, you know, low. And, come on. Uh, <laughs> and in those three years, the amount of partnerships that I've been involved in and, you know, have been introduced to from these three people and everyone I work with and people we meet in the industry, um, what they're doing and what we can all do together is just it's so exciting. And I think it's just, it, it, it energizes, invigorates, uh, it makes this industry dynamic and different. And I was at an um, event last week and they were, someone was just talking about how in this industry, even though everyone, you know, they're competitors, everyone, they're friends, they wanna work with one another. And it's not like other, other, other industries where you're competing <coughs> against one another. Yeah, you are competitors, but you're also stronger together. Uh, so that, um, to the technology, uh, just seeing and hearing what's coming about for IMTS this year is gonna knock your socks off. And uh, it seems, you know, that this industry is moving faster and faster and what we're able to do and all the, and what's going on in, in defense these days and in space and, um, you know, just having my son, you know, experience it on the, you know, the gaming side and then his technology side. I mean, we're all a part of that. So that's the second, and then I kind of did twirl it because I said the third, but the third is actually um, having my son come oh, and see that's IMTS. Awesome. Cool. So he came. He How old is he? Husband. He's 11 now. Awesome. So he came in 2022. My husband and, and, and Victor and Max came that Thursday night and were there all day Friday and some of Saturday and then we went to Cubs game. And so he's so excited to come back. And he's ever since then, and ever since I got started AMT, and I've said this before, he's all in on manufacturing. Oh. And his friends are now seeing, because uh, our colleague Stephen Lamarck and I will go and present to his class. And his friends have now said, several of them say, your mom does the coolest job. And one's like, I wanna, you know, what else can you tell me? Because like, I'll bring some of them some stuff. And uh, so having Max back again and seeing the changes over these last two years, he remembers, I mean, um, I've talked to Stacy Haramoto at FANUC and she's already ready to teach him how to program a different robot this time. She taught him how to pro program, a program a robot at FANUC in 2022. And the student sum is, is incredible. I mean, he spends, I don't know how long down there and, and the people, the exec from, you know, every person on the floor to the top executives, when Max has met them or been introduced to them are in just, they just embrace him and embrace what this, you know, next generation, future generations and workforce. And it's, um, so I'm excited for that. When, when is he going to be there? He'll be there. He, they fly on Thursday nights. So he'll be there all day Friday. So Friday the 13th. So yes. So tell your son to come <laughs> see my presentation at 10 a.m. On, on Friday. Friday. Yes. yes. Friday the 13th. Absolutely. Yeah. I would love for him to be there. Oh, yes. and he can yeah, even right. join me on stage if he wants to. Oh my gosh. He would you know, we, we really need, <laughs> we need kids like Max to yeah. be influencers. Because we've seen a whole generation telling kids that, yeah, there's nothing in manufacturing. That was my generation. We didn't. It, it's it, ridiculous. That's what they told us. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, and it's probably the most important industry. And so we actually need people like Max to be the influencers to get their kids, their colleagues, their, their peers to go, this is actually really cool. There's a huge opportunity here. Lonnie, I'm, uh, do you want to go and see? Because I was going to actually segue from that influencer thing that you just oh, brought no, up, ahead. Lonnie. Yeah? I was just going to say it's fun now watching movies with Max, um, movies, shows, and a robot pops on, you know, one of the companies that we know are at the show or some technology, and I'll say to him, hey, Max, look at that. I was like, you saw that. Or, you know, and it's just neat. So, go yeah, ahead. I agree. Cool. Yeah, I agree. All right, Lonnie, what I want to ask you is you brought up influencer, Max being an influencer, yeah. right? I would make the discussion that Manufacturing is typically a, typically a traditional industry. We, we shake hands, we high five, we want to see, touch, feel, right? Yeah. It, and the, I would say younger generation, as I'm getting older now, the younger <laughs> generation is more of an online group of folks. They're doing a lot of video studies. They've, I've done interviews with guys who've started their own machine shops, learning how to program from YouTube. Yeah. You know, and Love this it. stuff exists. But you and I come from probably the generation where we saw it all evolving and yeah. we we kind of a mishmash between uh, traditional and accepting the new. Yeah. How do you feel about 
and I, and I know my opinion, it's a very positive one, but how do you feel about the trade shows like what AMT has done? As I think they're the leader in incorporating the modern influencers among all the trade shows I've been to, but how do you feel about that adaptation of bringing the old and the new together oh. to, to, to bring that influencer status along with traditional manufacturing and marketing? I think it's critical. I, I, uh, I used to manage a lot of people, and, I, and one of the things I learned, I had this senior engineer, Randy Lind, I loved him, uh, he was very, he knew every single, he designed everything. He knew when a design was good, but he was based on traditional manufacturing. And then I would take a young college student and pair him up and watch the magic happen. I think that's, that integration of generations, getting them to work together, you make the, you make the more senior engineer think creatively, and then the older senior engineer is providing rigor to the younger engineer. There's a balance there. That's absolutely magic. So I think, like, you were talking about gaming industry and all this. I'm excited about where manufacturing is going because of that. Because of that. If you gamify manufacturing, if we create tools to where, where we can be more creative and get faster in terms of developing systems and, and products, the manufacturing industry is going to explode. It's already exploding but we got to gamify it we got to we got to look at these kids that are coming out of high school and college and really not go oh they don't know how to do this no we we got to let them show us how to do it right there's a real but you have to have that balance and that's where i think you do have to have both you don't want just the traditional you don't want just the new that's like hybrid i like hybrid mm -hmm. it's kind of combining two processes together to create something completely new yeah, and I, I agree with you 100%. I just wanted you to say it because I'm supposed to be hosting the show and I'm not here to just talk all day, but I 100% agree with you. Yeah. And and I think that's you know, a lot of kudos to you, Bonnie, and MC as well, and your team. Like Peter and everyone that's on part of your team has said, this is what we need to do. There is going to be a hybrid, Lonnie, as you yeah. say, of traditional to modern. And, and that, to me, as we have kind of nicknamed ourselves an invisible industry, but yet we make everything around us, how do we make it fun and entertaining and enjoyable and not just, well, we took a hunk of metal, we have grease and oil all over us, we have aluminum splinters in our fingers. How do we make it fun and exciting? And a lot of the thought leaders and influencers out there are doing that. So was it an easy decision to say we need to go this route? And once you made that decision, you got real creative. You have main stage stuff. You have after hours stuff. You have different cells where all these thought leaders are getting together to discuss. How how was that process to bring it all together as well? Because we've been traditional. Was it 1927 yeah. when IMTS first started? Yeah. So we're talking yeah. about almost 100 years at this oh, point. Yeah. Wow! Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's wicked. Yeah. So we've been talking about bringing more of like the influencers and. Because I mean, it's still a new it's still a new thing for manufacturing, it, and and how how to bring in like the younger people who they might not have experience, but they have knowledge, they have ideas. Um, I mean, we've been talking about having this sort of I don't know if culmination isn't the right word, but how do you bring them in since probably 2016? So and we really 2020 would have been the time we did it. But then, you know, we had COVID. So 22 was the first time we were really able to like, you know, because we've always had the student summit. But then how do you bring these people that they're on the they know about manufacturing, um, but they they have a voice and you want to hear them. Mm -hmm. um, and then how do you how do you put that with? I mean, because it's also like because we're a big international trade show and we have to be the, the best of the best and we have to stay the best of the best. So it's it's pairing up with people like you and you're more than an influencer i mean you have a podcast you have but you also have experience in the industry um and they and everybody does but it's like that passion and it's finding the right person with the right passion with the right connection and the partnerships i mean it it, it really is but we've been trying to do this for you know probably a good eight years and it's finally really kicked off to where you know, we've got our creators lounge and we're able to have them go interview the leadership, get the conversations going. Um, and then we've got our main stage with the, you know, the top tier people speaking like every 30 minutes we have people talking and every day, every day wow. for six days. And it's it's crazy because you know, we've always had the main we've had the main stage for a long time, but it's never been this busy. And we're so excited because people have so much to say. And we're ready. We want to get that voice out there. We want people to hear it, and we're just trying to scream it to the, you know, top of the roof. 
And you guys have done a wonderful job as of late of, of documenting most of this through video as well. Mm -hmm. We just released one together, actually, which I was very grateful for. Thank you for allowing mm -hmm. me to do that. But you guys have started, which, which shows me that we want people to be at IMTS. We love, again, I'm going back to it, shaking hands, touching things, being there one-on-ones. But let's be fair, when I was a machinist, I never would have had the opportunity to go to IMTS. I was just a machinist, you know, whether it was push button, line by line programming. Even when I was a manager, IMTS wasn't on my radar. That was for the higher ups to go make all the decisions. But we still wanted to see. Yeah. We still wanted to learn. And that's what all of this video that you're doing now as well really brings to the table. Lonnie, I want to go real quick into because uh, I asked both of these young ladies what they're excited about. You've been going to IMTS for a while. You mentioned creating a car right after a cup, which makes perfect sense. I'm sure in two years from now, you'll be making a plane or something. Mm. I'm not sure, but I'll challenge you. You'll probably say yes, and you'll figure it out. Oh, but you just wait. <laughs> <laughs> He's got something cooking for 2026. It's going to be good. We can't let the cat out of the bag yet? Oh, but yet. you already know? No, yet. no, no. I just, just, I just need to make sure I don't go to jail. Oh, good. That sounds fun. Well, I'll join you in that project if you need awesome. help. Awesome. Yeah, I've definitely yeah. tiptoed that line before <laughs> once or twice. I don't know what it is yet either. No, we don't. Well, we need that's because he doesn't he want you to go to jail. He, he needs to tell right. us before, before we, will, we release we will. it on the gun show. We'll work, Sorry. We'll work it. We'll work it. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, tell you first. That's fair. <laughs> Surprise! Um, so someone who's been in the technology for a long time and done some really incredible let's just say participation in, in all things yeah. manufacturing. When you go to IMTS and you're looking for whatever it might be as the next step, what do you look for? What are you excited? I mean, I get excited about automation, 3D printing, these yeah. things I haven't personally had the machining experience of actually because I was more of a three axis, five axis machinist, right? Yeah. So I get excited. What, what do you like to see? I, what I don't expect. Yes. What I don't expect. And that's what like the emerging technologies. It's like, like you were talking about Oak Ridge. I'm excited to see what they're doing. I have no clue. Even though I was there, I have no clue. I'm excited, right? And so it's the, and that's why it's like, like I, you ask an MC, you're like, what, what are you excited about? And don't go in thinking that you're going to see everything. Look for those things you don't expect to see because that's where there's huge opportunities, huge opportunities. So that's what I'm, I'm excited to be excited. I'm excited to be surprised. I like that. And I want to be surprised. The the machine hall that has all the big machines and then part even though this is my sixth IMTS <laughs> is the south. W south hall, which makes the opposite of that the north hall where the right. automation is going to be. I like that hall and sneaking all the way into the back for Lonnie. Yeah. What he was just saying it's because some of those are startups. They're yep. just getting their booth started, and you can you can sneak back there where the crowds aren't and learn something maybe nobody else has learned from the show. That's kind of cool to me as well. Yeah. Yeah, and well, that's because IMTS, you know, it's a big show. So it's also, but you can be, you can still be big at a big show if you put a couple ads out there as an exhibitor. You know, like make sure that people get your name. You know, put um, put some information on the uh, on the um, website because we have the Maestro Planner and people search. And you put the right keywords in there of what you're trying to do, it'll pop up in the search. And because we're really limited to. This is what manufacturing technology is doing, and because we have a really good search tool on the website, so. and the social, hashtag, and the social hashtag at IMTS mm -hmm. 2020. I love what you yeah. just said, though. Go in the back, look for the kids, because what you're looking for is the Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. the Wozniaks. Mm -hmm. Who's got something that's an idea that's going to evolve over the next three to five years that could completely transform the industry? It's there. It, it's there. Yeah, it's guaranteed. There. So if they're showing up, they're showing up to IMTS. Yeah, yeah. and they're probably wearing blue jeans and scrappy shirts. And you Booth know, is about the size of this studio. Exactly, <laughs> and they're stressed out, they're, but they're on to something. For sure. Uh, something that's big. that's the amazing part about yeah. it, right? Yeah. So, uh, Christian, turn on your microphone. I'm going to throw you right under the bus, and then MC, we're going to get to you in just a minute, just because I want to hear more of your voice and your laugh, because everyone <laughs> accepted you. Everyone loves your laugh. Christian, you've heard us on this show talk about manufacturing a ton. Occasionally, I try to get your opinion, because you're not a manufacturer, and you love, you know, MMA. You're, you know, our, <laughs> our, our uh, sound producer here. You do a wonderful job at that. Um... But let's pretend for a second that you were going to join me at IMTS this year, which is a manufacturing trade show, the largest in our country every two years. Western Hemisphere. Oh, Western Hemisphere. Well, large, okay, she, she wins, uh, per usual. Uh, Western, largest in the Western Hemisphere every two years. Based on all of the podcasting we've done together and all the stories being told, what as an outsider, as we try to attract more and more people into our industry to fill this skills gap and labor shortage, what would you want to see? Um, 
really anything robotic probably fascinates me so like that little arm back there that we have on the set yeah i don't know if you guys can see it maybe yeah. Yeah. little right little little, little fanic, fanic yeah, robot yeah, yeah. over there so anything like that um i don't know if that answers your question well, but sure. robotic totally stuff is super interesting to yeah me. and i would i would make the discussion also that you guys have done a wonderful job of growing and separating the automation area in the hall to make sure that they have a spotlight on them yeah yeah and we worked hard to do that this year but because we we wanted to feature them in an area because it it, it, well, in automation for IMTS, it's all over too. Right. I mean, because you've got you know that that little fanic robot, the bi the big ones in the South Hall, but it's because that they're there for um, different regions besides automation too. So it's kind of why the exhibitors are there, but they they bring their stuff. But yeah, I agree. And and a lot of the automation is you know, for example, like Akuma, mm -hmm. good friend of ours, uh, is going to have automation on their machines, mm -hmm. whether it's from them or integrated from. So, but it's on their booth all the time. Right. Uh, Christian, to your point. Fanic uh, will be picking up cars again, like they do every <laughs> every Super two cool. years. Yeah, everyone runs over there, takes a video. It starts trending every year. Uh, you know, it, it, the bigger robots do kind of shine a spotlight. Um, MC, yeah. back to you again. Always a pleasure. Always so <laughs> fun you. to talk with you. Thank you. But I love picking your brain because, much like Christian, you know. Lonnie, you and I have been doing this a while. Bonnie, you and I. Lonnie, Bonnie. Why did I just recognize oh that's a rhyme? Gosh, Why did I that didn't... just happen? <laughs> I've never recognized that. Yeah. But, <laughs> Lonnie, Bonnie. But the reason I love asking you questions is because every time you answer, it allows me to understand people that are learning and how I can do a better job to attract people to a really awesome industry than it's been ignored for a couple of generations. So folks like you and Christian, Christian being completely outside of it, you three years into it now, every answer allows me to go, okay, that's what I can do better. That's what I can do. This is how I need to speak to the younger generation. This is how we can attract more people. So I'm going to go back to you again. And as you build this up, the IMTS. Your preparation is immediately, probably during the show actually, but I would say the day after the show is over, you're prepping for two years from now. Yes. When you're prepping, what goes through your mind of how you are going to create the next two years from now and what can be done to a, a more perfected sense or, or, or more a larger plan, let's say? Oh gosh. Uh, I, I, know it's, I know this is unprepared, well, but I'm very curious. Well, I've, okay, I have, I, have, I have one thing. Can I go back you may. a couple things? You can do whatever okay. you want. This <laughs> so is your show. When we were talking about the influencers, I, and this is just from, I see it now uh, as I'm, you know, aged out. But like how Lonnie said, Max is an influencer. I feel like the word influencer is for that generation, for the, for yeah. the, for the kids. And when we talk about, you know, or, or people say influencers in our industry, I would pivot from that label because um, it's so much bigger than that. Like what 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 people are doing in this industry and and bringing that and how Lonnie said you know we bring the traditional with the new and it's like a it's like a three hundred and sixty degree mentorship I feel like oh, because cool. everyone is learning from you know each generation is learning from one another, um, which doesn't always happen in that. Um, fluid of a, of a way that I feel is happening in this industry now. So that's one. Uh, okay, so 2026. So I would say, I mean, I, this is my plan if it works out. Um, I mean, see what happens at this show. I mean, there's so, so many um, strong and um, just, I don't know, invaluable partnerships like we talked about before that um, we have leading into this show. And those don't go away. I mean, the way that AMT and IMTSC partnerships is not a, a one-year deal, a flash in the pan or that kind of thing. I mean, they're long-term. They're long-term relationships, long-term partnerships, friendships, all that, um, to, to just strengthen the industry. And what I'll do is, you know, see what else, what is going on, what happens at 2024, and where that launches us on to 2026. I mean, we do have, um, you know, a couple other shows in 2025 that we've never had before form like chicago which is one which is you know ad additive manufacturing and bridging additive manufacturing with that industrial manufacturing base which hasn't been done before uh and that looking at what's happening at this show this year and additive many additive sector going into that and then we also 
have SPS Atlanta. I'm not trying to do a promo for these. I'm just saying. <laughs> you're doing great, though. I if know, you're not, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> again, that's automation. So looking at exactly what we're, we're talking about, what, what is happening in automation and, and digitalization and additive and then machining. I mean, what is going on there? And with like talking with Okuma's doing. I mean, they've never done that, that hybrid cell. So I'll be out there, you know, Shaking hands and chatting. Uh, and kissing then, babies, shaking hands, kissing <laughs> babies. Kissing babies, <laughs> shaking hands. She also, we were on I'll the plane ride here, and she's like, what about this idea? What about this idea? And I was like, MC, no more ideas. Like, <laughs> like I, we're, we're too close. Like, we, I, I can't take any more. Like, she's already planning, and I'm like, these all sound great. And the thing is, they're, um, they're still good for 26. So, or we might do something in 25. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, this girl's got like so many ideas. I was Thank just you. like, woo. Okay. Do, you, do you keep a notepad beside your bed when you can't sleep at night to jot these ideas down? I have, do I, I have my phone, which I know you're not supposed <laughs> to do. So then I do, I put, I put uh, notes or I, I'll send myself texts. <laughs> so you you I, text yourself. I do. It works really well. Because sometimes if I put it in the notes, I'll forget. But if I text myself, do I'm like, Do you say, hey, it's me? I'm like, no. I, just, I know it's brilliance coming in. You're, like the, <laughs> I'm just you're the symbol of manufacturing, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's true. Not really. You said that's true. That's true. <laughs> not really. She's not that crazy. She's no, not that no. crazy. But thank you. Uh, we appreciate you, you. So you can see our clock. We're starting to run down, but we still got a little bit of time. So what I want to do right now is take a moment. And I'm going to join you guys in this as well because I get very, very excited about IMTS. I mean, this. yeah, you have something to say, Bonnie. I like this. Well, I... I just want Lonnie, <laughs> I did this before, I want Lonnie to tell the story of what, because this is about IMTS, and talking about why do people come to IS, IMTS, why should you come, I want Lonnie to tell, in a, in a short way, what IMTS did for Oak Ridge National Laboratories, ah, and the yeah. manufacturing demonstration facility. That was actually going to be the closing thing, was why should people come, but but yeah, well done. Well, you, we should change seats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should. It's a Bonnie Lonnie takeover. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think you know, so coming from a national lab, you usually are very structured. You're going one step at a time, advancing a technology. And I think when we printed the car with local motors in Cincinnati, it, I had a colleague, Scott Smith, that said we, it enabled us to do the audacious. We, what we did, like we actually said we're going to commit to doing something. We don't know how we're going to do it, and we're going to do it in front of a lot of people. And we had leadership that was okay with that. We had leadership at IMTS, at AMT, leadership at Oak Ridge, and it really changed my whole perspective in terms of even research and manufacturing. It's like, instead of going incrementally, just shoot way out there. Go for the, go for the gusto, shoot for the moon, and you know you're not going to get there. You know it's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll, we'll learn a lot along the way, and we did. And, and that one demonstration, as I said earlier, there were like seven companies that adopted the technology that stepped forward and started doing it. And to me, it completely changed not just manufacturing, and it changed Oak Ridge, it changed the way the Department of Energy looked at manufacturing. That one week was magical. And that's what, to me, IMTS is about. Mm. Uh, should we just end it? <laughs> I mean, no, you can't, we we, I don't think we could say anything more important than that. That, oh, was, that no. was amazing, Lonnie. We can say things. Yeah, that? no, it was, I mean, it, it, he's told the story before, and I hadn't looked at it from that perspective, because, you know, I've been working for, at IMTS for many, many years, and I'm the one that's able to, like, open doors for people to do different things, and th the most stressful one was doing the, the 3D printed car, because, you know, me intaking all the information, and it's like, you know, well, we're going to do this, we're going to try that, you know, a lot of things that didn't happen but we just kept adjusting. And IMTS is able to do that because I think we have a solid base of what the show is. So we have this one area where we can do the Emerging Technology Center and we can, and, and play isn't the right word, but we can allow you know, the technology to be like, this is what it is. And if it, if they had, if it had failed, it's, it wouldn't have been as amazing, but it still would have been incredibly cool to be like, look what we did. So, um, you know, and, and Peter will be like, as, as Lonnie said, I might get fired. We might get fired. I'm well, like, I think Peter's going to fire me. <laughs> let me let but, me you know, it, it, it was, if you don't put it out there, and IMTS is a great way to do it. And if you don't go, you're not going to see it. And it, it's not the same on video. And, and we also talk about, like, bringing the team to IMTS. Like, you know, 
spending time, especially if you're driving in, like let your people come because mm -hmm. it's an amazing experience and you never know who's going to have an idea. And that's where, you know, it, it, it's a great that's place. That's where the magic comes. Come yeah, that's where the magic happens. Well, let me, let me add one kind of closing comment on that is it, when we did that, it started getting us thinking differently, the Department of Energy thinking differently, and we were synthesizing, we were creating crises, right? We were just creating a crisis. Yeah, sure, we'll print a car live in front of 120,000 people, what the hell? Yeah, sure, we'll print an excavator in front of 120,000 people, what the hell? And then COVID hit. COVID was a bad time, and we had a major manufacturing supply chain problem. Mm -hmm. And in a three-month period, and it gets to partnerships, we had 16 labs working together, hundreds of companies. We, we stood up a whole new supply chain for N95. I remember walking with Craig, my, my colleague Craig Blue, and he's like, hey, and it was magical. He goes, hey, did you know the inventor of N95 is from Knoxville? I was like, no. He goes, yeah, his name's Peter Sy. I was like, God, that name rings a bell. And I go home and I'm talking to my wife. I was like, name Peter Sy mean anything to you? And she goes, he's our neighbor. Stop it. <laughs> No lie. No lie. So we pull Peter in. We convert our carbon fiber production line to make an N95. Then Cummins comes in and go, hey, we got an air filter production line. Can we? Can you help us convert it over to N95? Sure. What the hell? You know. And then Demotech, a company down in Florida. Craig gets hooked up with them, and we're sending them materials. We're going from nothing to a million masks a day. The other one that was funny was we're, we're – the guy at HHS calls me, calls me up on a Friday and goes, hey – you know, we got a crisis. The White House is saying that we have 500,000 test kits in the United States per week. We need to scale to 20 million as fast as possible. Mm. And I'm like, yeah. She goes, can you help? I was like, absolutely, sure. I'm like, I don't know what the hell we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's on a Friday. Sunday, my phone explodes. And I'm like, what the hell? You know, it's got the lab director, people from, from, from DOE, and I got my buddy Craig. And uh, Craig, I got like all these calls. What the hell is going on? He goes, did you tell somebody we were going to make 20 million <laughs> test tubes a week? I was like, no, I said we would help. He goes, well, Trump just got on the White House. You know, he's doing his press conference. He says Oak Ridge is going to make 20 million oh. test tubes a week. Isn't that awesome? He goes, what are you going to do? I was like, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I don't know what we're going to do. Monday, we have a meeting. It's like, what the hell are we going to do, guys? I don't know what we're going to do. And one of my colleagues, Brian Post, goes, have you ever seen a Coke bottle preform? I was like, no. He goes, it looks just like a test tube. And we pull it up and it's like, holy shit, that looks like a test tube. All right, so who do we know that can get us up as high as possible in the C-suite of Coca-Cola? Well, it ends up Dave Nuttall is my head of operations. And he goes, my wife is head of HR for Coca-Cola. I was like, you've got to <laughs> me. By afternoon, I'm talking to Dave Katz, the COO of Coca-Cola. And they're, within a week, they're delivering 10 million test tubes. Mm. 10 million. Wow. That's the supply wow. chain. That's partnerships. That's manufacturing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's to me, to me, manufacturing saved and partnerships mm -hmm. and the government and industry working together saved millions of lives during COVID. We just don't know it. We just don't know it. And it was because we got used to doing crazy shit. At right. IMTS. At yeah, IMTS. for, 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 for uh, 120,000 people. Be fearless. Cheers to that. Yeah, be fearless. You're fearless. Yeah, you be might fearless. have never done that. No, never if, would have done it. Wouldn't, if, have, yeah. wouldn't agree to do it. Yeah. But it was because of IMTS yeah. that we had the audacity and the courage to say, yeah, we'll try it. Hey, everybody. Mike Franz here with Shop Floor Coffee. For 20 years, we've been seeing the same issues going on with workforce development and the shortage in... Uh, in workers across the industry. We wanted a way to give back. Shop Floor Coffee is our way to do that. Proceeds from every bag or every uh, type of pot coffee you buy from us go back to the community. We work with amazing programs and initiatives across the country where we're giving back. Uh, we wanna help support the community, help to come together with us, join us. Join us in this, uh, in this effort to help support the community. Please, thank you very much. Well, I got two things from this. One is, was it really somebody called and said we were doing five hundred thousand? We need twenty million. No, you're like, we could probably help with that. And then the next day, Trump's on television saying, "No, no, it we're doing a, it." it, was, it was, was it really it was just Rachel, like that? No, it was really like that. It was Rachel Kellogg from Health and Human Services calls <laughs> me up on Friday. I'm like, sure, we can do that. Sunday, I'm out hiking with my wife. I leave my phone behind, and it's gone absolutely crazy. And I call Craig, and he goes, 
what did you say? <laughs> goes, did you tell somebody we're going to make 20 million test tubes a week? No, I didn't say that. Well, we're on the hook. <laughs> got to find what, a solution. That's what she heard. <laughs> got to find a solution. So, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. <laughs> well, Thank you for doing that for us. No, no, but, but also. Can you make a, can you 3D print a car? I sure can. Sure, what Can you hell? make 20 million? Yes, I sure can. You're a yes guy, I can I tell. am a yes guy. I am a yes guy because, you know, you have a good team. You have a good team, and you trust people. Well, the second part of that that I was going to bring up was I don't even want to do anything else but listen to you tell stories for us today. Can you just tell us <laughs> tell us a bunch of stories for like the oh. next hour or something like that? Oh, he sure can. <laughs> yeah. So good. Uh, you know, my job is to get everyone involved, uh, but I've just decided I want you to tell stories. Uh, <laughs> I, I will say, Tony, and, and this is, but AMT does, or, and AMT does have a video podcast with Dr. Lonnie Love and Dr. Tom Kerfus. It's very different from The Gun Show. Very different. But if people want to hear them, it, they have... Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to amazing hear it? Amazing story. It's it's you can find it on IMTS Plus. Yeah, the, that's what I was going to say. Send us a link. Tom and Lonnie chat. Tom and Lonnie chat. TLC. 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 So, it's also on the... It's so, not as good as this. It's just a bunch <laughs> of old engineers <laughs> complaining. No, Kyle's <laughs> young. Kyle is young. Kyle is... <laughs> Kyle's he balances young. us. Yeah, we're we're young at heart. And you guys have great stories. But I will say, I do want to say... because. Uh, Lonnie and I were at, is it West Tech? Was it 2019? 2017. And it was, it was pre COVID, and he just tells these stories, and I'm like, we've got to get you on a podcast. I need to do something with you and your stories and your technology and all the stuff you can say. And then, um, lo and behold, we started this TLC thing. Well, COVID and, hit, and, and then it was spark, right? But it was like, it, it was one of those, like, you asked about influencers. How long does it take to, to create something? You know, eight years. It's, you know, four years later. It's like, and, and of course, Lonnie, we're standing in line at the buffet. Like, I got to get, <laughs> I got to figure out how to get you, like, a podcast thing. Because podcasts weren't that, I mean, they were still new then. Sure. Especially in manufacturing we had probably you, one maybe but uh you know so it, it takes a while to come up with these ideas like you got an idea but maybe it takes four years to figure out how to how to implement it but um it, it's been great having them do their podcast and they're the two of them are so smart <laughs> so and kyle good. kyle it's, is yeah. kyle clb lonnie if it makes you feel any better the last time i had these two young ladies on my show they took over i wasn't oh, even i, I wasn't I, even I, on I, the show I, in I, fact there was two <laughs> other young ladies four seats all women i wasn't even on my own show no no you just let them it's <laughs> like <you> actually it, <laughs> it's like duke basketball just roll the ball out and let them play <laughs> they're fine they're fine duke, <laughs> let them play they're fine i mean i say go tigers clemson but Oh, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. I, I will care. say, I, I had a lady that I worked with, and her uncle was the head coach for um, Duke in the '90s. Whoa! Yeah, she wow. used to go to the games all the time. Yeah, that's when they like it, her uncle all isn't the time. Coach K. Shasky. Yeah, that's who he was. <laughs> coach K. <laughs> coach K. Wait, Wait what? Uh -huh. Jordan. That, that's your friend's uncle was Coach uh -huh. K. Yeah, that's a big. Deal. What? Uh -huh. Wait, this is <laughs> yeah. This right, is a whole. A okay, that, that's a whole other way. Back in the '90s. Uh -huh. I was, you know, I'm old. Oh, yeah. no, Your friend's you're uncle is Coach but, K? What? Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, he's a know, legend. Yeah, yeah, he's an inspiration. Uh -huh. yes. yeah, the, bear, the bear talks about him. Yeah. Yeah. I, love the bear. I never met him. But well, she used to go to the games all the time. She would, yeah. Can we get him on the podcast? <laughs> Probably not. Right? I mean, you know, never hey, know. If you hey, say it out loud. Hey, <laughs> 3D printed basketball, baby. Hey, we got Lottie on <laughs> here. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> that, that, those are going out. Give like, it a shot. All Give over. Shot. Give it a shot, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was going to add one thing. Um, also with the, and now I can't remember where it started, but it was just all about the audacious and everything that goes on. Um, and for my three years here at AMT and IMTS, um, leadership. I mean, it it, it, it it comes from brave people like Bonnie and this one here. And it comes from our top leadership of um, Peter Eagleman, Doug Woods, um, pushing those boundaries and, and being excited about it. And uh, I mean, I think on the, the other podcast when we were here uh, with you a few months ago, I talked about my career in skiing snowboard and my former president there, David Injimini. And he was... You know, it's a different industry, ski and snowboard. We had a global trade show, uh, and he was the same, very similar, just, you know, open to it, excited about it, and, you know, and he had this saying that I'm not going to, because it's kind of a terrible saying, but it was like, if it fails, it fails. We learn, and yeah. and I feel very much, you know, um, you know, being at AMT, that it comes from the top, and it's, um, it's, it's there, and it is... 
you know, the, the, the changes even just with the, you know, from IMTS 2022 to 2024, um, it's pretty cool. And like Bonnie said, I mean, and Lonnie said, and you, I mean, be there cause, uh, and leave time to go find what you don't expect because uh, it is, it's, it's magical. Yeah, I agree. I agree with all of it. Um, two things I picked up from today from all three of you. One was going to the show for six days changed the way the industry did things. That was just highlighted so profoundly. And that is what can be done at a show like this. And then Bonnie and MCU just uh, reiterated as well, come to the show. We are making videos because it's mathematically impossible for everyone to be there, even though we'd love to have everyone there. But if you can come to the show, don't make an excuse of, well, my flight ticket's too much. Well, you're going to make more. You're going to figure something out that you haven't been able to figure out before. Sure. You know, take a little time off from work. Be there in person. You know, we hear sometimes silly excuses, sometimes legitimate excuses. But if it's just an excuse, figure it out. Figure out how to be there. It could change the way something is done within six days. So I want to play a couple of games. Um, you, guys, you ladies and guys have done a wonderful job today. We have two truths and a lie. Uh, we have oh, would you boy. rather. And we're going to do rapid fire. So no, no thought behind that one. Just say whatever comes to mind. Uh, MC, should I skip uh, you for two truths and a lie? Or <laughs> Lonnie? I'm I not, would say yes. I'm not I sure. was trying to practice, but it's not working. <laughs> it's not that hard. I don't know. I don't get it. Lonnie, you chose this game, two truths and a lie. You've already told all stories that I wouldn't know if they were true or not no, true already. True. Yeah, well, so Trump was on TV after I said, yeah, maybe. That's true. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> so two truths and a lie from you, but you can't use anything you've already used. Sure, sure. Aliens, um, aliens, aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got some aliens. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, truth or Truth or a lie? Um, Two truths, yeah, one so lie. I, we we got to guess. I designed and printed a uh, titanium robotic hand, hydraulic, that gave you the thumbs up if you pressurized it right away. Uh, we 3D printed a Shelby Cobra in six days, or in six weeks, designed, printed, assembled, and Obama and Biden got to see it. Um, and... We developed a process where we used bacterial poop to make quantum dots. Do you know these stories already? You guys spend a lot of time together, right? Yeah, I know, um, you know a few of them. Yeah, so you know this answer already, Bonnie? I think I yes. still have to guess on, I think I still have to guess. Yeah? Yes, I know some of it. MC, I know it. Do you know? Yes. You weenie. No, you <laughs> don't. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say the first one was a lie. Which one? The hand? It's a thumbs up thing. That's good, because it gave you the finger. <laughs> <laughs> of course it did. And why would it? Video. I got a video. Because that was in hydraulics, it's like electric, right? Least resistance in this hydraulic hand had a pump in the hand, and the least resistance went to the middle finger. And I haven't released this. So there's a lot of Till now. <laughs> Till now. But I got a video where I pressurize it and it flips the bird. Now, what's interesting is that was around 2009, 2010. And again, my buddy Craig, he said, hey, the White House, the Secretary of Energy wants something really cool that the Obama administration can use to show where manufacturing is going. So we gave it to, I think it was Ernie Moniz at the time, who then, so I don't know if Obama still has this. Or if he even knows that if you pressurize it, it'll flip the bird. But, <laughs> but, but it's out there somewhere. Oh, he knows. Uh, he probably knows. Know this is what I is. think of that yes. idea. What does this do? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> now that will get Max and his friends all in. I've got, the video. I've got the video somewhere. I'll get That's it to you. That's great. 11 years old, you said? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> anyway, exactly. Right up there. Bonnie, do you want to do two truths and a lie, or would you like to skip that game this time? I have a dare for you. Oh, gosh, that's right. Oh, gosh. And we're doing this so everyone can know the dare. So I'm either a sissy or I have to do it, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. This is strategically <laughs> done. Do you need me to tell you how truth or dare works? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Between that and spin the bottle in sixth I grade. I say go back, go back to sixth grade, my friend. Seven minutes and heaven spin yeah. the bottle. Yeah. Although we just sat in the closet. That yeah. That didn't everyone? No, exactly. <laughs> it was good. All right. What's my dare? Okay, so on your videos, you're always dancing and having a lot got of fun. Some grooves. Mm -hmm. Got some grooves. You got some movement going on. For better so, or worse. So what I would dare you to do is to get a 
group of people to go dance down the aisle of IMTS <laughs> with you, and we get it on videotape. Yeah. I think I know a group of people would be willing to do that. So? I could probably... They gotta have together, a good hit, gotta have a good about hit, a dozen hit folks. With some, yeah, you gotta have some drinks beforehand. Yeah, that's then good. it makes it more interesting. Yeah, so we well, can't start the it, day dancing on the hallway. No, 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 you no. could do it in the afternoon. We could have like a reset. Well, after maybe one of the reception, yeah. Yeah. yeah, or the beginning of one. Yeah, yeah you have a, a hall preference. Um, we can figure out what hall might make sense depending on where you are, because I know that you've got interviews all. We can the come day. to you, so you can let us know. You can let us know which one works. All right, so for anyone well, watching, listening out. right now, we've now been dared to dance down the halls of IMTS. And you know I'm a yes man, just like my buddy Lonnie over here. <laughs> uh, so we're going to figure out how to do it. If you would like to participate in this and you're watching or listening to this podcast, leave a comment, shoot me a text, send me an email. We'll get a time together. We'll get a day together. We'll get a haul together. And we're going to create a fun dancing IMTS video. We're going to do it. And you're going to Don't make me do it by myself. <laughs> you got to make your own music, too. Like in our heads? Yeah. Well, we can, what about we can, like 80s boombox style? A, oh, I have a JVC one that my dad bought in New York City in 1980. Can you pack it with some batteries, bring me a tape, and let's, you know, you got some yeah, I got it. run DMC or something? I don't know. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you might want to make sure it still works. It probably does, though. Yeah. Oh, Your sure. dad Is it probably, JVC? Yeah. Nice. They always work. They always work. Yeah. <laughs> Easy electronic. I, I will say that I have driven the, the Shelby. Because it was at IMTS, and I got to drive it off the show. It's cool. Before. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And it, wait, where is it again? It's in, it's the, in uh, DOE. It's at DOE's headquarters. In the lobby. Yeah, in you DC. know, it's funny. This is another one that's really funny, because as we're doing this, it was six weeks. First week we do the design. After the Stratty. Stratty yeah, was, was one. Two weeks later, or about a month later, yeah. we were told. We did it at the other show. Yeah. No, we just did it because we knew Obama and Biden were coming, and I was told, make something cool. Did and you do so, it for the other show? No. no. Oh, okay, no. good. Okay, good. And so we were told, do something cool. We got six weeks. And I was like, okay. Because they asked, can we get the Stratty? I was like, ah, I can't get it. And They wouldn't uh, give it to you? I didn't want it because I wanted to make my own car. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh, your lie. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lie. And Jay's going to hate me for it. <laughs> Jay is going to hate me He's for fine. it. He's fine. You got on the table. But, but, but we had six weeks. And so the first week we do the design because our, our schedule is design it one week, print it the second week, assemble it the third week. Figure out how the hell to paint it the fourth and fifth week, and then sixth week, get it on a dyno and get it under control. So first week, we're doing the design, and I'm presenting. Uh, you know, we're, First off, we decided to do a design competition to see who's the coolest car designer. And after day three, it was like, we, all, su Shelby. we all suck. <laughs> yeah, let's, get, let's get Carol Shelby. He's a hell of a lot better. So we start printing. Well, first off, one of our, one of our transportation guys goes, you can't print that. I was like, what do you mean I can't print it? Because it's copyrighted. I was like, I don't give a shit. I'm a government. We can do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm thinking, I'm going to go to jail for this one. So we start printing it. And my head of safety goes, hey, this guy, John Shashowski. And John goes, hey, are you printing a, a, a Shelby? I was like, yeah. He goes, can I take a picture? I was like, sure, I don't care. And he comes back. He goes, my brother-in-law really wants to drive this car. My brother-in-law really wants to drive this car. I was like, who the hell is your brother-in-law? No. no lie. It was Bob Bondurant. Bob Bondurant, no, but Bob Bondurant <laughs> was a race car driver for for Carroll Shelby, and he drove the Cobra no in 1964. Way. I was like, your brother-in-law is so going to drive this car. <laughs> and we brought him in. We brought him in and let him drive it. And he's like 84 at the time, and he's, he gets in the car, and it's like, we're doing 80 through, <laughs> through the parking lot. I'm like, sir, this is a, this is a plastic car. And he's like, I haven't killed anybody yet. <laughs> you know? like, so, yeah, it was awesome. That was absolutely awesome. But it gets that audacious. It Just is. try something. It's awesome. It is amazing. Well, I do. I have one plug on that. Oh, do for you? IMTS. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, Lonnie, Doctor Lonnie Love, Doctor Love, uh, Rick Neff, Jay Rogers, and Brian Post are going to be on the main stage with uh, Gary Vasilish for an interview conversation about uh, 3D printing the audacious. What time? What day? Oh, really? I know. I think it's <laughs> Thursday. It's Thursday afternoon. Thursday morning. We need to figure that check, out. Check, that go, sounds go amazing. To, go, go to imts.com slash is. stages and look at the main stage. imts.com yeah, slash stages. It's incredible. That's yeah. because we have everything every 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it'd be tough to memorize it all. It's really great. So It's never been so busy on the main stage. Oh, it's really I'm so great. excited. It's really great. Great. It is. It is. <laughs> Where's your rapid fire? 
Oh gosh. I think uh, we're over time. No, we are. We are. Oh, I'll give on. you each one yeah, rapid. I'll give one. you each two rapid fires. How about yes. that? And then we're done. And then okay. we're done cuz yeah, we're okay. we're well over time, but I don't yeah, care. We're, we're Christian, do you care? Or, he doesn't care at all. Christian's a good man. He loves hearing Lonnie's stories as well. <laughs> oh, you know what? We actually didn't like can we get one clip of um what Don what Donnie, Donnie, Bonnie, Lonnie, yeah. Bonnie, what Lonnie, yeah, it's tequila. <laughs> no, 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 no. What Lonnie is doing now at Sandia, if he can talk about it, I don't know. It's probably talk about some it. Of it. or maybe not. But he's no, at no. he's at Sandia. No, now. no. San, so Sandia is is awesome. It's just the opposite of Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge is a great science lab, uh, and really focused on kind of next generation manufacturing technologies. Sandia is an engineering lab. So we're looking at how do you take these manufacturing technologies and use them for national security. So it's a blast. I mean, the hypersonics is wicked cool. All kinds of, I mean, we're making satellites and working with companies like SpaceX and Divergent. It's a blast. So it's different. And so, so tell me the details. You can't. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Bury you in the desert. Worth it. Like <laughs> worth it. <laughs> it really is. So I, I would tell you, it's really cool. I was in, I was in, um, Monterey with a with another fellow. This California guy, or Mexico? California. Okay. And somebody said, you know, we're in this this exercise, and somebody says, what could Sandia do to have the world a little bit more stable? It deter our adversaries from doing crazy stuff. And this guy that was one of my colleagues said, he just described, we could just make public. We we're, we're exercising. We're trying this. Just make public. And everybody in the room goes, oh, that would be bad. That would be everybody to stop. <laughs> and that was like, that's that's awesome. That is influence. You know, we're talking about being influencers. We're trying just to influence that we, we still re retain a world where everybody is working together and not creating these terrible borders that we see with, with what can happen. So I, I absolutely love it. It's the, the mission is inspirational. Um, leveraging partnerships is inspirational. So having a fun time. I don't even have anything better to say, honestly. <laughs> I just, all I want to do is just hear you tell stories. I don't even. <laughs> my voice is unneeded today <laughs> for one of the first times, and I'm very grateful for that. I love listening to you tell stories, Lonnie. Thank you for being here. Thank oh, you thank so you. much for coming down to Florida and spending time with us, Bonnie and MC. Thank you both for thank you so much. In, making the introduction and oh, then yeah. joining me again for a third one. You're 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 such a blessing in my life. I appreciate you both you well. very much. Um, do you want to do a rapid fire? Let's you want it. me to close this out? No, let's try, do a rapid we'll fire. Try a rapid fire. I want you guys to start with MC. Well, no, no, because <laughs> I gotta see how it goes. I wanna see how, if I can do it. Uh -oh. I don't know. Well, don't start with me. <laughs> okay, fine. Go. Yeah, okay, let me see yeah. if I can find one for you. Let's see here. Uh, quality control, art or science? Both. Okay, good answer. You say myth. <laughs> myth. <laughs> <laughs> Zero waste manufacturing, achievable, achievable or utopian? Oh, absolutely achievable. Ooh. Wow. All right, sure. Lonnie. Some of what's going on now. Is space manufacturing the next frontier? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Biodegradable material, solution or stopgap? Solution. All right, Bonnie. Big data and manufacturing, gold mine or mine field? I think with time, it'll be a gold mine. Cobots, helpers or hazards? Helpers. That's right. Ooh. All right. We have done it. Thank you all awesome. for being here on Thank the you. show. Thank you all for watching, listening, wherever you are today. We appreciate your time. Time is the one thing we cannot manufacture more of. And you have had three of my favorite guests ever on this show. Christian, thank you for being exactly who you are as well. And my editing team at MTDCNC, thank you for doing everything that you do to make us look with less gray hair, a little thinner, how to... A little thinner. I'm not sure how you do that. Anyway, thank you all for watching. We appreciate you. This is The Gun Show. And join us again next week for another amazing episode.